All right, so today for part two, I want to continue doing some mythical creatures, but uh, for this first thing that I want to show you, I want to do something just a little bit more advanced. So this is kind of just something you may not quite feel ready to do things like this, um, but this is something that maybe you want to start thinking about, and I don't think it's really ever too early to start just really stretching your imagination and trying to manipulate things to, um, you know, really fulfill what you want to accomplish. So what I decided that I would do today and probably the majority of this video, I'm going to not only draw two mythical creatures, but I'm going to try to draw them kind of interacting with each other. Like I thought maybe just having a battle between a centaur and a minotaur could be kind of fun. So that is what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to have my centaur over here. So I'm going to start drawing the centaur just for the sake of I want to draw from left to right because I'm right handed. So I'm going to first draw the horse body of the centaur. And so I'm going to start very loosely, of course, just with the rib cage. And I want to make sure I leave plenty of room for both of the creatures. And this horse that I'm drawing from is a little bit foreshortened. So here, this is going to be the pelvis back here. And since it's foreshortened, I kind of want to draw the whole pelvis rather than just from the side. And I chose this one just because I really like the position, the pose. And so I'm going to keep the pose pretty much the same. And because it's foreshortened, this leg is going to kind of land on the ground right here. But these front legs are going to come down a little bit lower to about right here. Except, of course, this leg is up in the air. So it's not going to come all the way down to the ground. And we'll just kind of see how this works out. But I think that this makes things just a little bit more fun and dynamic, kind of creates almost a story to it. All right, and then, so of course I'm not going to have like the head of the horse, but this is gonna be kind of where the body is going to be. And I think um, for the body, I decided to have kind of a, a female, and I like the idea of this being almost like a Greek mythology scene, even though I'm sure, you know, this isn't an actual story, but let's see. So the tricky thing about drawing something like a centaur is that, you know, instead of a horse's head, which would kind of be right here, I have to get the whole like upper part of a human's body. So it's kind of a, we almost have to kind of deconstruct it and work a little bit backwards just to make sure everything fits in a nice proportional way. So I'm actually, let's just kind of put the rib cage in here first. So I'm not even going to deal with the head just yet and this might not even be right but let's just see so we don't have to worry about a pelvis or anything um but shoulders and then the action that I want her to be doing is going to be uh a little bit complicated so we'll just kind of see because I don't really have a perfect photo reference for what I want but we'll just do our best here. So this arm that's going to be holding the bow is going to be a little bit more outstretched. I'm going to have my minotaur like down here shield he shielding himself. So I want her to be kind of aiming downwards and then maybe kind of pulling back on the string of the bow with an arrow. And this is going to be kind of the tricky part. So I'm just going to do my best and we'll just kind of see how it goes. All right. So let's kind of just put in the neck here. I know that's a little too long, but let's just kind of, when you're working backwards like this, it makes it a little bit trickier to kind of figure out where everything should be. But I'm going to think back to my skull studies so that I can try to get it pretty close. Okay, so I think, you know, that's a good starting point. 
let's kind of go back and start adding in just a little bit of form. I want to get this whole line in place so that everything kind of stays uh, very congruent and makes sense. And then I'll add the legs. And I'll pretty much try to get this centaur to a point of being mostly finished before I even start on the minotaur. That can be a little bit risky because I might spend a lot of time on this and then uh, you know, make some kind of fatal mistake on the minotaur. But that's, you know, that's kind of one of the risks that you just learn to take. And if everything kind of falls apart at some point, all you really need to do is, you know, whatever aspects of the drawing you like, just trace them, trace that onto a new sheet of paper, and then you can kind of start over on the parts that you're a little bit less happy with. So don't be afraid to take risks with your drawings. And then this is going to be where the body of the human part starts. So I'm going to just leave that for now. I'm kind of just focusing on the form of the horse at first. And then this other leg back here is very much hidden and almost, you know, this horse is kind of trotting. Not super fast, but kind of kind of like the action going on here and then you can't really see this back hoof too much we'll just put it out a little bit like that I really like the shape of the tail on this horse but for now we'll just keep it very simple and that looks pretty good I think so we can go ahead and start kind of focusing on the human here all right, so let's see how this will come together. We'll just kind of play around with it and see. And I like the the drapiness of this kind of Greek outfit here. So let's see if we can try to kind of incorporate that. It's a little tricky with the merging of the body into the horse, but we'll just see. See how it goes. I don't know about this other arm. I probably didn't quite account for that right. So I'm going to try to find the placement of her eyes. So I'm just going to lightly draw a line here. And I'm not going to go into any detail on these faces, but I kind of just want to get in some basic features here. And then we'll kind of put in some hair. Very, very rough and loose for now. But I like the hairstyle in this little illustration. And I just found this illustration on pixabay.com, so... They do have, in addition to photo references, pixabay.com does have some, you know, illustrations. And obviously you could even go on there and just find illustrations of centaurs and minotaurs on there. I didn't find a lot. I found a lot of, like, dragons and stuff like that. So that's something I think good to know that you can at least get, like, a, a starting point there, even if you end up taking it in a different direction. kind of want her hair to almost mirror the shape of the tail a little bit. And then this shoulder probably needs to come up 
a little bit. And then the forearm, I think, must just be really foreshortened. I'm not sure. Uh, let's just try to put the bow in her hand. A little bit. I'm not going to go into any detail. It's just going to be kind of a a fist right here. And then the string needs to be coming back here. Bending where she's holding it in this other arm. And then, let's see, the arrow then will pretty much be in line with this arm, I think. Okay, that's not too bad. So I'm not going to really do much with this arm back here because I think I like it just kind of hidden back there. Again, that just goes back to a little bit of what we discussed in part one, where sometimes less information is more. Sometimes you can achieve plenty just by creating the impression of what's going on. You don't have to actually go and depict every little thing a lot of times, but we often feel almost an obligation to over explain what's going on by drawing out every little detail. So just good to keep in mind that you don't always have to draw everything. And, you know, for a sketch like this, where we're just kind of having fun as well. Um, I just want to kind of give the sense of this battle. And I'm really going more for like a feeling or, you know, an action more than, you know, a really detailed illustration. So, okay, let's go ahead and kind of put this gown on her. Where did my eraser go? Here it is. Just want to kind of clean up some of these lines. They're a little heavy. Um, let's see. I wonder maybe we can have kind of the gown coming onto the body of the horse a little bit. I don't know. What do we think? It's a little tricky. Kind of tricky to put clothes on a something that's like part animal. We'll just see. And it can be subtle anyway, so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be a big deal. And then maybe we'll give her like um, something that shows that she's carrying more arrows back here. Okay. So I kind of like what's going on here. So let's go ahead and just kind of do a little bit of shading. Start with the horse part. I think I'll just kind of go and give this an overall shade before I go in with any real darks. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm not going to worry about any of these construction lines because they're just going to kind of disappear into the shading. Feels like there's something under my paper. Keep running into like a little bump, but oh well. Okay. And you can see we don't have to really do a lot with the face, you know, because it's not the focus of the drawing. We're really, again, just going for an overall kind of action feeling. So a lot of times if you want to have a lot of action in your picture, it's actually best to not have a lot of like facial details because when we see a lot of details, it creates the impression in our minds that things are like a little bit slow like we can stop and notice those details but when you want to have a lot of action it's actually best to leave things like that really just very general and not have too much detail in there and I think of it as you know like say that you're painting or drawing some kind of still life you know and when you do that you really kind of just get to absorb all the details but then if you think about uh, like photography or something, you know, photography where you're catching some kind of action, like a sport or something, you really don't see a lot of detail. And sometimes you even see like it's blurry, but that really just kind of adds to the drama of the picture. And so we can really accomplish the same thing in drawing by thinking about, you know, where and when to use details and when not to. So don't feel like you always have to draw out everything. Leave some things up to the imagination of, you know, the people who are going to be looking at your art. All right. And let's, um, I'll get rid of some of these construction lines on the person just because I'm not going to make anything on her terribly dark. Maybe we'll just add some, some sense of like the draping of the gown, but not too much. Okay, so I'm going to leave the centaur for now, and now let's move on to the minotaur. I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I'm going to start out with this pose. Now, a minotaur is basically the body of a man, 
and I guess just the head of a bull. So I'm going to kind of stick with this pose and I want to kind of line it up so that he's shielding, shielding himself from the arrow. So I'll go ahead and just kind of mark in where the shield should be and then we'll kind of work from there. And this does not need to be perfect at this point. It's almost just kind of a placeholder. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and just kind of mark in the head just as it is on this illustration. This is another illustration I got from Pixabay. And we'll just kind of work backwards from there and then we can add the bull's head last. So I've got kind of the general shape of just the man's head. I'm going to go ahead and put in the rib cage now. And this is another tricky pose because he's not standing or running. He's very much, we've got a lot of foreshortening in here. So let's go ahead and just kind of think about where the pelvis should be. And we kind of do have to draw the pelvis a little bit more than I might otherwise, just because of his angle. And then we have, so here's one leg joint and then it's going to come out like this. Hopefully we don't run out of space on this paper. And then the other leg is going to come down like this. And sorry, of course, about my dogs. Maybe I'll, I'll let them go outside. Hold on one second. Well, I'm back, but my dogs refuse to go outside. It's too cold. Okay, so here's another example of where we know that this arm here is holding up the shield, but we don't really see anything, so I'll just put it in his shoulder joint there just as kind of a placeholder. What I really want to capture is kind of the angle of the shoulder right here, so I want to make sure that this shoulder joint is a little bit lower. And then he's going to be holding a sword. Oh, this arm is actually way more sh foreshortened than that, so actually his elbow joint should be all the way up here. You see how short this line is? And then even his forearm is kind of foreshortened a little bit because he must be holding it out, you know, kind of not just down to his side, but out a little bit to his, to, uh, the side of him. And then I'm going to, even though I'm not drawing his head as a human head, I do just kind of want to mark in where his eyes are. And let's go ahead and just work on his form a little bit before we do the head of the bull. So we want to make sure he has a nice, thick, strong neck, big shoulders, but he's, we'll put it like a lot of armor on him so we don't have to worry about drawing every muscle, but basically he would have like a, a large muscle here attached to the bicep, forearm, kind of helps just to think about the muscles as being, uh, you know, just big ovals and then for his hand we're just going to leave it very very general as well just like hers go ahead and just draw a line for the sword it kind of comes out ooh, it's almost going to match up perfectly with the arrow that's kind of cool I think if I were going to redo this I would kind of move her up on the page a little bit so that there would be more room for him I almost feel like he's running off the page a little bit but you know, that's just one of the things that, you know, is good about sketching and thinking of every drawing when you start out as being just a sketch. It's just a starting point because you're going to realize, you know, maybe the positions aren't quite right. A few things need to be changed. And as long as you're not too hung up on, you know, making your very first drawing your final drawing and you kind of tell yourself ahead of time that you might have to you know, work it out a little bit. I think that's the best way to approach really anything. So you can kind of let down your guard a little bit when you start out and just kind of see where it takes you and see what you learn from the process. And then we were not gonna, in the photo reference, I can't really see his back legs. We're just gonna kind of guess, but it looks like this foot comes out like this. 
And I'll kind of give him some, I don't know, boots, I guess. Okay, so that, let's make a shield just a little bit bigger. Okay, so now let's work on the head. And I decided to go with this buffalo, mainly just because that's all I could really find that I really liked on Pixabay. Sometimes you just can't find the photo reference that you know you might prefer. So you just have to go with what is available and adapt it. So I'm gonna have he has gonna have a really large head, so part of it's gonna, I guess, be a little bit behind the shield. We'll see. Let's put in the horns. So we need to angle the horns very much in a similar line with the eyes. So he's gonna have kind of an eye here and an eye here. All right, and then we have to, we're gonna give him a big, thick neck. It's gonna be even thicker, I guess, than what we had on the human. Let's see if we can kinda help this to make a little bit more sense. All right, I'm gonna kinda clean this up just so I'm not getting super confused by all these construction lines. even though I'll end up kind of shading him pretty dark, I'm sure. Eh, something about the head I don't, I don't really like. I feel like he needs to be looking up more somehow. Or maybe somehow his, I need to make the face come in front of the shield just a little bit. So if we're thinking about the skull, we would have, this would be like the cranium, and then this would be the snout. And then if I was drawing this as a skull, this would be one eye socket, the other eye socket would probably be over there. We'll kind of give him a heavy low brow, kind of give him that mean tough look. Not worrying too much about the eyes being super detailed. And then let's draw in the nose roughly and see. Sometimes you have to put in a few details just to see if things are working out. So yeah, that's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Could maybe make his shield a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's go back to the sword. So I've, just like when we did that unicorn horn yesterday, I started out with just a line and then I can kind of build the sword around that and that will help it to stay very straight. And we'll make it very sharp at the end. This is gonna be kind of a wide sword. And then the handle, I think, we'll just keep it very, very simple. So even simpler than the photo reference. So I'll just kind of give it that kind of shield or handle that we're used to seeing. And then I'll have a little bit of the handle sticking out back here. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll put some armor on him. I kind of want his mane to be kind of hanging over the clothes a little bit, over his shoulders. I want this to be very like 
very gruff and rugged. And since he's so dark, I really have to try to make the eyes stand out by making them really, really extra dark. And the nose as well. Okay, and let's go ahead and kind of do his armor. And I'm just going to go off of this illustration a little bit. I don't know a lot about armor. There's some artists who they're really into like battle scenes and things like that. And so they can really get into the design of armor. And I think that would be really cool. But I'm not quite there. So I'm just going to keep it pretty general. make his boots really dark. And then, let's see, I'll get this other boot in and then we'll do a little shading on the pants. make him look just a little bit more gruff, I think. Put a little shading on the horns. Uh, let's see. Can We we'll need to add a little bit of detail to his shield, but not much. I don't want it to be as dark as he is because then this will all just be a big block of darkness. Just a few very sketchy details, though, will really help. Okay, and then on his sword, we'll do a little shading. Don't need a lot. Just give it a little bit of a shine, especially at the very tip. Okay, just about done with this. Just kind of do a little bit of loose scribbling in on the pants so that they're not white. Because who goes into battle wearing white pants? And overall, I think I like this. This is at least like a good starting point. And I think that from here, you can really take it and, you know, make some adjustments if you want and just have fun with it, really. That is always what it's about. All 
All right. And yeah, so if I wanted to kind of make some changes to this, all I would really do is, you know, maybe put the centaur a little bit higher up, a little bit further back so that they can line up in the same way. I think that, you know, they ended up lining up really well. I'm happy with that. I just don't like how close he is to the bottom of the page. So that's something that you can easily fix if you decide to, you know, do a sketch and kind of just evaluate what you like and what you don't like about it. Trace onto another sheet of paper the things that you like and the things that you don't like. Keep working on them, you know, and that's kind of the process that you go through until you get to a point where you really are pretty happy with the overall composition of your drawing. And, you know, when you're working from imagination, you just have to do a lot of problem solving and experimenting and some things are going to work and other things are not. And the more you do it, the more success you are going to have. So just, you know, again, just keep practicing, keep working on it, don't give up and don't get frustrated. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is just talk a little bit about dragons and how to draw them and how to draw the most two common kinds of dragons. So I'm going to first draw the kind of dragon that we mostly see in like Norse mythology. And so let's just go ahead and get started. Um, now, a lot of times dragons are more based on maybe what we think of as dinosaurs rather than specific animals. Although, I mean, you could definitely look at a combination of different reptiles. And a lot of times, you know, they have like the wing wings of like bats. So that's kind of what we're going to stick with. I am going to start out with a rib cage. Now I do want to make the body kind of long. So I'm going to start out with this rib cage. Hopefully this isn't too large, but I might just have to kind of move things around so that things just all fit on the paper because I want him to have like a nice long tail. So let's go ahead and do like a pelvis just like we would with any other animal. And I'm not going to draw the tail yet. I'm just going to stick with the basics at first, just like when we draw any other animal. So then I'll give him kind of a long neck and then skull. And let's, so the sh shoulder joint will be kind of up there. And we're going to draw this dragon kind of flying through the air. I'm hoping that I'll have room over here for the other dragons so I can kind of put them side by side, but we'll just kind of, we'll just see. And then for the leg back here, nothing special, just kind of our typical animal. All right, so the tail, let's maybe make it kind of wrap around. We'll make it really, really long. How about like that? Okay, and then next, let's do some wings. So even though I'm going to do kind of a bat wing here, I'm going to start out very much the same way that I do a bird wing. Just to have a little bit more of an angle here than with a bird wing. The bird wing kind of is more of a curve, and we'll do a little bit more of like a sharp angle here. And then this is going to be kind of like the bone comes up here, there's a joint here, and then there's talons, maybe that come out like that. And then basically all we have to do for a wing is just kind of link these together. So actually these wings are pretty easy to make, the bat wings. Okay. And then let's go ahead and try to kind of add some form to the rest of the body here. Give him some big legs. And he'll have kind of like claws, but I'm not going to draw those in just right yet. I want to get the basics in first. And then for his body, we'll kind of give him like a tapered body and a larger chest. And then I'm going to try to kind of think of 
a very like reptile head here. So it's going to have kind of a narrow snout. And then a long, long neck. And then his tail, I don't want it to be too narrow, so it's going to be almost like a just a really long dinosaur tail. I don't want it to taper off too fast. But it could get kind of wide at the end. I don't know. We'll see. A good way to practice drawing something like this, like if you happen to have any figurines at home, I know I do. Uh, my daughter has lots of dragon figurines, but I think they're all in a box and I'm too lazy to get them out. But that actually would be a really good way to just kind of practice. Because I know like um, with the figurines that she has, they come in like all different forms. So it's kind of fun to just explore that. Then I'm going to, I'm going to give him kind of a brow right here and place his eyes just right under that. I could make his mouth, actually let's do make his mouth open, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So an open mouth, the top is going to be about the same, but the lower jaw is going to come down a little bit, and we can give him a really long mouth. That doesn't look very scary though, does it? <laughs> I kind of want him to make look really fierce, so let's just see. Maybe I'll give him more of an angular head. And I'm trying to think of like the mouth of a an alligator almost. One thing I really liked about the alligator was that its mouth had like all these really interesting curves to it like that almost move his eye up here I don't know he just to me he has like this expression of just kind of being sad <laughs> it's not really what I'm going for so let's uh move his jaw like way down here we can just really exaggerate it maybe we can even exaggerate it a little bit more than that Maybe we'll even practice drawing some fire coming out of his mouth. And maybe when we give him some teeth, he'll look a little bit more fierce. So let's go ahead and give him some claws. So what I'm going to do, kind of just start out with the hand part is just being kind of a, just kind of a stump, and then we can make the claws come out from there. So we'll have one kind of coming up here, here. Make them really long and fierce. I need a little help making them look scary. And then I want them to have some spikes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a very light line. This is gonna be where the spikes kind of come up. And we can erase that if we need. And then the spikes will get really large. And then along his tail, they'll get a little bit smaller. So Okay, we'll leave those for now and work a little bit more. Let's give them teeth, but not, not just like straight teeth. And my pencil isn't very sharp anymore, but I'm just going to kind of sketch these in. Make them like kind of curved a little bit. A little bit jaggedy. Maybe his that ear is making him look a little bit too much like a cow or something. Something about him just doesn't look quite fierce enough for me. So I'm just going to keep making adjustments until I'm happy. I 
And then for fire, we don't need to go into a lot of detail and we just wanna kinda keep the lines very flowy and light. Kinda like that. And then we'll do his other claw. There. Now he's starting to come along a little bit. Add some claws down here. Maybe they're coming out in front of the tail a little bit. Give him some long talons. So this is very sketchy, but I think that you kind of get the gist here at least um, of how you can just start working really from just pure imagination. And uh, like I said yesterday, I'm not very good at drawing in like the, the other wing, but I'm just gonna kind of put another wing back here, basically just mirroring this one. I know that's probably would not end up being anatomically correct, but Right now we're just kind of going off of a rough baseline of anatomy and form and things like that. Just kind of putting that into practice and trying to just see what we can come up with. Just trying to be very creative and don't let anything, we're not going to let anything hold us back. All right, so just to get rid of some of the construction lines, I'll just give them a little bit of shading. You could go in and draw like scales, just like we did on the mermaid yesterday. I'm not gonna spend that much time on this. I really wanna keep this just very sketchy and just kind of just explore how we might approach a completely made up creature. And then when I do the other dragon, it's gonna be more of like a Chinese style dragon. And for that one, I'm going to keep it much more snake-like. So this one, I was really trying to think of like reptiles and a bat. Uh, for the other one, I think we'll put it down here, but it's gonna be much more like a serpent than this one is. They both kind of have long bodies. And I guess a, you know, a snake or a serpent is a reptile technically, so these are both roughly based on kind of reptiles, except, you know, a bat isn't a reptile, obviously. But it's a good starting place, you know, just to try to think of what those animals look like and help that make you make some of your decisions when you're creating something that is more made up and fantasy based. And again with fire, I think that the biggest thing is just to keep it very light and uh, flowy and don't outline anything in your fire if you want it to look a little bit more natural. I'm definitely not a fire drawing expert, but it's fun to play with. Let's make these teeth just a little bit more clear. This is a ferocious dragon. All right, I like him. Spikes need a little bit more work, but I'm not gonna worry about that because I want to go ahead and draw another dragon. Now this one I'm going to start out with just like a big curvy line. And maybe if I can, I'll make them kind of look like they're battling. So. Uh, the head maybe should be up here. 
And then I'm just going to draw like a big like winding snake. Like that. So that's going to be kind of the center line of the body. And this one, this dragon should be a little bit simpler to draw. I'm not even gonna bother with like a rib cage because I'm going to keep it very, very much like a serpent. And their ribs basically go throughout their entire bodies. And then maybe we'll even make him kind of twist around right here. And then I like on like Chinese dragons, they always kind of have, I don't know what you call them. I almost want to just call them fins, but all these kind of like fringe things all over them. I'm not sure what the proper terminology is. Chinese dragons are so cool. I love them. So I'm going to kind of just give him, it's almost like a fur or a fringe. I'm not sure what to call it, but I kind of want to put that just all along the body. And that kind of shows us where the spine is as well. So I'm going to kind of put some up here. It's not really spikes. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are kind of like fins. And then over here, I'm going to draw it kind of just coming on the other side. All right, so let's give him kind of a brow ridge right here. Some eyes. Make his head just a little bit also more like a snake. Uh, the difference is going to be that it will have arms and well legs, I guess. So it won't look totally like a snake. Another th cool thing about Chinese dragons, too, is that they always have, like, all these things, like whiskers or something. I'm sure that someone knows all the proper ter terminology for all these features, but I don't. So we'll, we'll just call them whiskers, but I like them. They're fun to draw. And let's see. Let's make his mouth open. Really thinking of just a snake. So we'll even give him some fangs. I'm really sorry that my dogs are making such a commotion, but they won't. They want to go outside, but as soon as I open the door, they decide it's too cold out, and then they don't go. So this is why I typically when I do my videos, I do just a voiceover. I have to actually like wait for my dogs to go to bed so I can do a voiceover for my videos. And sometimes I just I don't have time for that right now. And I still want to make videos, so I apologize. I promise they're really cute. They're totally, they're totally worth all the ruckus they cause. But I'm sure you don't think they're terribly cute right now. So let's go ahead and just do, uh, you know, instead of doing like two sets of legs, I'm just going to do some front legs because why not? It's a dragon. So kind of the same approach I'll do here. I'll just kind of keep it very general. And then we'll just do some long claws coming out here. And maybe the other... Where should it go? Can I make... Yeah, I think I can... We'll do kind of this other claw back here. Okay, so not much to it, kind of kind of fun just to do a couple little scenes where these mythical creatures are dueling it out, and I hope that you enjoyed kind of exploring this with me. I think it's really fun, you know, to, it, it not only makes your drawing skills better, but it just really loosens up your imagination, and I think that that's really important, and because they're imaginary creatures, you know, you don't have to worry too much about 
you know, making them realistic. You can really just go kind of crazy with your imagination and do whatever you want and just see what works out, see what you like and what you don't and whatever, you know, you feel like you want to improve. This is going to help you to kind of figure that out. But I also really just hope that you can see how helpful it is to have a basic understanding of how to draw animals and how to draw people and how that can really free you up to do anything that you want in terms of your drawing and your creativity and just exploring different ideas that you might have. So keep practicing all of these skills and I promise you that before you know it, your drawings are going to improve so much and you won't even know exactly how it happened. It's almost like magic, but it's really just about sitting down, doing some drawing, having fun with it. Don't stress about anything and just keep doing it, you know, try to, you know, do it every single day if you can, even if it's just a quick little doodle here and there. Um, but it's going to help you so much over time. And I really hope that you enjoyed these videos and that you found them helpful. And yeah, I will be talking to you later. Bye.